So through the final corner of Silverstone we go to start this ultimate car comparison with the 1991 F1 car accompanied with Michael Schumacher being the very first entry of this list. Heading now down turn 2, 3 and 4. Turn 1 was absolutely flat. It's called Abbey and you can just take it fully flat through there with every single car that we'll be testing today. But the exit from the 1991 F1 car looked fairly solid with those outside shots, no DRS with these cars, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem heading now down into Sector 1. 27.9 is the Sector 1 time, it's purple, but that's because there is no other entries on this list. So, out of the exit of La Field we go, what beautiful outside shots we're having here of the 1991 F1 car. So, Michael Schumacher is going to be driving it then down into Cobbs. Is this flat? Yes, it actually is with the 1991 F1 car. Very tiny car, this one, and it really easily took off at that Cobbs corner. Now, Maggots, Beckett and Chapel. Uh, as you can see, the car not struggling as much as you would expect it to, getting a good exit. No DRS, as we said, with those 1991 F1 cars. Second sector is the quickest one, 39.8. And there you have it, our second entry on this list, making its way now down towards turn 2, 3 and 4. We'll be joining them fairly, fairly soon. But for the remainder of this lap, let's focus on Michael Schumacher and his Jordan from the 1991 F1 season. What can he do through this final couple of corners? He's going to be rounding it off absolutely flat through there. Michael Schumacher crosses the line and that is a 137.3 for Michael Schumacher. Up next, your one and only, the truly magical Fernando Alonso setting the first purple sector, uh, but that's to be expected as the 1991 car is 12 years apart from the 2003 Renault that we're currently watching on our screens. Uh, so yeah, very much to be expected that those times come down very quickly. 25.6 as we said, that first sector. Cops is absolutely not flat with this car as it has the speed but it doesn't have the downforce to accommodate all that raw horsepower. 320 k's down to Maggots, Beckett and Chapel. Uh, absolutely incredible speeds as we run kind of wide there but we do save the car. It's not an invalid lap which is all that we could hope for. No DRS on this car. As you can see the 2007 uh, F1 car is now out on the track setting its own course but we'll be heading with them in just a few moments as uh, Fernando Alonso will be finishing his lap. Second sector was purple as well. This should be a massive improvement uh, through the final corner then he goes absolutely flat with the Renault, crosses the line and that is a 132.3 for Fernando Alonso. Up next is Robert Kubica using his 2007 BMW Sauber and that has allowed him now to set Sector 1 the fastest. This is a very disturbing story because Robert Kubica in 2007 and more specifically in the Canadian Grand Prix had a massive massive crash that didn't let him race for a couple of months and that right there made way for Sebastian Vettel's debut and then he went on to win his four championships but that's a story for another day through Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel 330 kilometers an hour with this car absolutely beautiful rotation a very nimble car this one takes the corners very very nicely if I should say so myself and as you can see the 2009 uh, F1 car is now out on track that is a brown GP if I'm not mistaken but oh massive Massive rear loss there by the BMW. He keeps it on track though, Robert Kubica setting second sector fastest as well. 37.9, that's one to beat. Through the final couple of corners then, the 2007 BMW on board with Robert Kubica. Going to be crossing the line in just a few moments, so 129.7 for Robert Kubica. Up next, a team and a driver truly for the history books, Mr. Jensen Button riding his 2009 Braun GP. This car had so much controversy on it due to its double diffuser design that was used in that 2009 season and that basically led them to win their first and only championship, being the only constructor to ever have a 100% championship winning rate. So, through Cops, it was absolutely flat, if you guys didn't notice, through Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel, keeping a very nice and steady average speed through those corners, nice rotation, we ran just a tiny bit wide, thankfully we don't cut the corners, second sector was the fastest one, as this car has so much more downforce than the previous ones, and now Jensen Button is going to be going through Stowe, as you can see on the bottom left, we had the 2016 car making its way to the first couple of corners, and Jensen Button through Stowe, absolutely clean through there, and we'll be heading now towards the final couple of corners through here. Then he goes absolutely incredible. We're now on board and we'll be watching him cross the line. 
first sector was green, second was purple. Is this going to be an improvement? No! What a spectacle that Mr. Jensen Button gave us, but now it's time to jump into the 2014 Mercedes F1 car on board with Nico Rosberg. First sector was green, and this is such a special car because this is the very first car to perfect the 2014 regulations, which basically introduce a bigger power unit and just bigger energy storage. Uh, Mercedes basically perfected this, and this just gave them a massive advantage for the next few seasons to come. But through Magath's Beckett's and Chapel now heading 350, Five kilometers an hour this car is fairly understeery if I should say so myself on the ultra soft compound way more understeer than the 2007 car but that makes sense because there is much more weight on this car DRS and ERS now online and as you can see the 2020 racing point now making its way down towards the first couple of corners oh massive rear loss again there by Nico Rosberg second sector was purple there by Nico Rosberg let's see if this is going to be any kind of an improvement over the 2007 F1 car he'll be crossing the line in just a few moments fifth and soon sixth gear 260 over the line that is actually not an improvement really close lap times between the 2007 16 and 2009 car on board now then with Sergio Perez, Sector 1 was purple, 25.1 as you can see, and I do expect this car to beat everyone, smash them out, all the records that we have set so far. 300 kilometers an hour through Cobbs, absolutely flat through there, Magnus Beckett's and Chapel now, very nice outside view, if I should say so myself. By the way, this livery is probably my favorite livery of any F1 car ever made. Uh, because that racing point looked truly unbelievable. Sector 2 now is purple. As you can see, the 2024 Visa Cash Up RB is now making its way out on track. As you can see, Sergio Perez then set the second sector fastest. And I do expect to be at least a second quicker now with the 2020 F1 car. These regulations allowed for some incredibly, incredibly fast F1 cars to the point where FIA had to actually slow them down. Sergio Perez crosses the line then 127.3. Such a great improvement. And now it's time for the last F1 car to make its way onto this list. The 2024 Visa Cash Up RB Racing Team. With Yuki Tsunoda actually, not Daniel Ricciardo. Because he has been having an absolutely troubled season. And there is rumors that he could be replaced in middle of the season. But Yuki Tsunoda has been doing actually very well for him. He has scored a couple of points. Uh, all the way up there with the rest of the midfield. Going through Magath's Beckett's and Chapel now. He's been doing an absolutely incredible job. Sector 1 was a green, but that's to be expected as the 2020 F1 regulations were the fastest F1 cars that we will probably ever see. Uh, oh, and yeah, did you think that I wasn't going to tell you about our sponsor for today? INV Works uh, makes some incredibly high quality helmets, uh, really good stuff by them, very cheap as well. Absolutely anything and everything that you could think of to cover your row racing needs, they absolutely do provide. So check them out through the link in the description because they are absolutely truly unbelievable. Back to Yuki Tsunoda then and his hot lap. As we were saying, Sector 2 is now green, but that's still to be expected. As we said before, 2020 F1 cars, the quickest F1 cars to probably ever exist, as Mercedes had truly perfected those regulations as well, finishing laps ahead of the competition. Uh, truly unbelievable, but through the final couple of corners then Yuki Tsunoda is heading up to 6th, 280 over the line, 128.9 for Yuki Tsunoda, placing him in 2nd. And there you have it, every F1 car is now on the leaderboard and now it's time to actually switch to our special cars. And beginning with the Indy car and more specifically with Pato O'Ward in his McLaren Arrow car. They are powered by a Chevrolet V6 engine, which is very cool sounding. And up to third, back down to second. As you can see, missing the apex there slightly, as there is not as much downforce as uh, the F1 cars have. Not DRS as well on the Indy cars, which is going to lack them in terms of straight line speed, although they are very OP at that straight line speed. Now, heading to uh, La Field, although I have to say the IndyCar looks very aggressive on those outside shots. Uh, not too great performance-wise compared to the F1 cars, but just from the looks, the aesthetics of this situation, the IndyCar looks truly amazing. Now, the Formula 2 car is also out on track. We'll be jumping with them fairly soon. Not flat-out cops, as there is a limited amount of downforce in these uh, IndyCar uh, cars through Marcus Bex and Chapel. As you can see, very, very aggressive looking on those outside shots, the IndyCar. Very, very nice looking. 
uh, that IndyCar if I should say so myself. Sector 2, uh, green again, as we said, don't expect anything too great as the 2024 F1 car itself wasn't able to top the 2020, truly shows the 2020's performance. A uh, slight rear loss through Stowe for Pato Award, but he keeps it on track. Now we'll be heading through the final couple of corners. Uh, not the greatest apex there, but good exit from Pato Award there. We'll be seeing what that lap time is in just a few seconds time. Crossing the line, and that's going to put him, wow, almost last, a 132.9. Uh, but now going with Oliver Behrman and what an incredible season he has had, not in the F2 category, but more importantly in the F1 category, just jumping in the Ferrari with one free practice session and scoring points basically and some good points as well as Carlos Sainz had to do this appendix surgery, which did not allow him to race, obviously, but Oliver Behrman just jumped in there and made truly the most out of the situation. But really quickly, I want to thank the Raw Arthur members and the top tipper, who is Mr. Shuffle. You guys are truly making a difference in me being able to buy a new PC, which hopefully should happen soon. But Oliver Behrman then will be finishing his lap fairly, fairly soon. That's the last card to cross this line for the video. Oliver Behrman, Sector 1, Sector 2, green. Uh, doesn't look too great from the looks of things. Might be last, this F2 car. Crossing the line now. Yep, it is last, a 138.0. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the very next video. Peace out.